人来のゆえんをお教えしようお手並み拝見Zato has one of the most obvious win conditions in Stride. Safely summon Eddie and position him so they both assault him with multi layered, high, and low in throw looks. What's not so clear is how incomplete Zato is by himself. He can't mix, get meaningful conversions, or defend himself properly. Basically, he has half the functions of a Guilty Gear character. The focus should be here where he's weakest, however a lot of players are focused on developing counterplay after he's already met his win condition, and as a Zotto main, I can tell you, it's honestly too late. So let's focus on forcing Zotto to play without Eddie for the whole match, which as we continue throughout the guide, you'll learn is a lot easier than it sounds. And since Zotto is my main, he's the perfect character to introduce quizzes with. They'll be at the end of the video to twist your knowledge, so don't worry about it right now. With all that being said, let's shut Zotto down before we even get started. Duel one. At round start, Zotto is already handicapped. He's by himself, so you're facing down an incomplete character. In order to summon Eddie safely at round start, he has to at least land a normal on block, so let's go over his options. His fastest normal is his far slash at 10 frames of startup, but this is easily forward punched. And with punishable with the micro walk back. His next option is crouch slash, coming in at 11 frames of startup. Meaning if you're any of these characters, you have a faster crouch slash. But it's not really a matter of speed because the hitbox is abysmal. I mean, just look at this. It has to be the worst hitbox in Strive. As long as you have a move that's active at the same interval of time, chances are you'll beat it. This also applies to its far slash, so feel free to wall out either slash with the quick punch. After you've exposed his slashes, he'll try to hold his ground with his punches and kicks, but these just give the illusion of being go keep out buttons. Even though Zotto players don't act like it, both his stand punch and crouch punch can be forward punched. His stand kick has no range, which only leaves him with crouch kick, which does alright in terms of speed and range. And even if you do get hit by Crouch Kick, at max range it doesn't combo into a sweep or any of his other Gatling options. So you're probably thinking, well at least if the kick hits, he can safely summon Eddie. And the answer to that is nope. <laughs> you can smack him before he does Pierce, Frog, or Drill. The only thing he's allowed to do here is Oppose, but you can just pull up and grab while he's still summoning Eddie. So yeah, safe to say you can bulldog through Zotto at round start. His last bastion of hope is going airborne with flight to create an opening. But in this scenario, it's simply a matter of anti-airing properly or just running him down in the air. He's the one being bottlenecked here, so you're in the driver's seat. You expect this to happen. So understand, unless you are also playing Zotto, you have already won at round start. Please, take advantage of it. Even if Zotto manages to slip away, he still has to summon Eddie in a meaningful fashion. If he just empties summons from full screen and sends Eddie directly to you, he can't protect him. He needs to close the distance, create block stun, and then set up the mix. He has two ways to solve this problem. Create the block stun himself, or empty summon Eddie and let him do it. Now that you've gotten a sense of what Solo Zotto looks like, I'm sure you can guess which one he's gonna go for first. The safest thing for him to do is empty summon and get Eddie in range to use his moves, so let's start there. Eddie has four different attacks. Pierce, Drill, Frog, and the infamous Oppose. If Eddie is already summoned, Pierce will be his go-to. It starts up in 13 frames, disjointed at the tips, and although it's a mid, the hitbox is low enough to the ground, you can't forward punch it. The key to being this move in neutral is contesting the 7 frame gap between the two hits with a crouch punch. There's actually a trial in mission mode that'll let you set this up so you can get the timing down for your character. Getting this down will either force Zotto to plug the gap, 
special cancel into a pose or use drunkard shade to put Eddie behind you. All of this is to protect Eddie, but it comes at a cost. If he plugs the gap, he can't mix you. If he cancels into a pose, he leaves himself open to a grab. And if he puts Eddie behind you, he can leave himself exposed. None of this can happen if you don't contest the Pierce to begin with, so be proactive here when you can. There are ways to punish you for doing this, which creates a rock, paper, scissors, but if you do nothing and block both hits of the Pierce, you're almost definitely getting sent to the Shadow Realm. Once you deal with this move properly, you'll have significantly less Eddie gauge to lock you down with. Next up is Frog. It's just as fast, but has more surface area. If Zotto's using this in neutral, you've kind of already won because it takes half of the Eddie gauge no matter what, meaning if he locks you down properly, he won't be able to both mix and convert into me damage. At least not without me. Even so, this move's bark is bigger than its bite. It's easy enough to stop with the 6 -point. Now, Drill is pretty straightforward. It doesn't come out as fast, but allows Eddie to attack without putting himself at risk because all the drills are disjointed. In exchange, this move also takes up a lot of the Eddie gauge just like Frog does. But unlike Frog, since Eddie stays on the ground, he can be sent behind you at any point with Drunk or Shade. Its weakness in neutral is that it travels slowly, so you can either jump over it or back up and let the move play out. And since Zotto loses half of his gauge, if the move completes, he will most likely cancel the move on whiff or on block as soon as he feels comfortable to start locking you down. You can use this to your advantage. If you're not locked down quite yet and you see the drunkard shade, you can either approach from the ground or the sky and if Zotto doesn't get Eddie to cover him up in time, you're officially in. Which brings us to a pose, which honestly deserves its own section. Let's start with understanding how a pose works before we get into its applications. A pose has two phases. In the first phase, when Zotto is nearby, all strikes, even projectiles, are consumed by a guard point. But that doesn't stop you from grabbing Zotto. But you can't just pull up on Zotto for free because he has a command grab, which takes priority over normal grab. So as far as neutral is concerned, it's better to play around the second phase. In the second phase, Oppose becomes a disjointed hitbox that falls forward, creating what we like to call the Oppose Zone. To escape the Oppose Zone, Super Jump or Get Behind Eddie. Bonus points if you can escape and get Zotto to block afterwards because that will unsummon Eddie. This is where exploring character specific options comes in handy. Whether you attack him or escape the Oppose Zone, as the move completes, Eddie will be on recovery for three and a half seconds. But unfortunately, as you probably guessed, Zotto has ways to work around this. If you're not in a position to threaten Zotto immediately after a pose comes out, you enter what we call the Oppose Stance. This is a mini game where the underlying premise is Zotto must get some value out of a pose, because if he doesn't, the move will complete and he'll lose Eddie for free, which could potentially lose him the round. With this in mind, when you're in this situation, remember there are three primary ways that Zotto can get value out of a pose. Run up and grab you as fast as possible if you're close by. Use a pose as a meat shield to safely land a normal and then put Eddie behind you with Drunker Shade. Or go directly into Drunker Shade and try to lock you down from behind with Eddie. In essence, the further away you are, the more guesswork Zotto has to do to get a reward from this stance. Up close, the grabs are easy enough to spot, it's just a matter of you getting out of the way quickly. You can either jump or backdash or use a special move to get out of the opposed zone entirely. But a pose will protect him even if he fails a grounded grab, so it's pretty low commit. So you should focus on just getting out of the opposed zone and then looking for an unsummon or drunkard shade, that's when he's vulnerable. In the mid range, he can use a pose like a meat shield to protect his terrible normals, and whether they land on hit or on block, he can send Eddie behind you and begin putting you in the shadow realm. He has far enough normals to pull this off, but as we talked about before, they're still slow and take forever to recover. Baiting the whiff once you see the pose come out with a fake approach or super jumping out of the way of the normals will then allow you to counterattack from a position where he has to choose between protecting himself or protecting Eddie. 
from further away where he can't lock you down with normals quickly, he can send Eddie behind you directly. This is extremely risky because during Eddie's travel time, Zotto himself is completely unprotected. He's simply betting on you respecting the space where Oppose just was. If you have the reactions or the read, feel free to inform him the round is over. You also have the ability of just playing conservative, super jumping to avoid either option and respond from there. I know it seems like a lot to remember, but once you see the oppose, just remember the premise. Zotto must act. Either give Eddie a command before the move completes or attack you directly. The worst thing you can do is nothing out of fear of oppose. That's when Zotto start unsummoning point blank in your face. Do not let Zotto do this. Him unsummoning in your face means he is consciously choosing to become a bad character and thinks you'll give him so much respect he can choose to become a good character again. Remember, the further away you are, the more guesswork he has to do. Now, these are the guidelines for a pose when you don't have meter. When you do have 50% tension gauge, it's a whole different ballgame. With 50% tension, you can actually just attack a pose directly, then red roaming cancel, effectively making the oppose a jump pad to get to Zotto. If he blocks the red RC hitbox, you're plus 24 in his face, and if he gets hit, well, GG. Either way, having 50% in neutral means you actually want him to use Oppose. Oh yeah, and if that's not enough, Oppose does not protect against Overdrive, so if you're close enough to punish a raw summon of it, just go for the Overdrive. Okay, now that we know how Zotto likes to use Eddie to trade offense, now let's talk about how Zotto creates openings for himself. In spots where Zotto doesn't have time to safely summon Eddie, he'll try to make do with his normals to create an opening. His most valuable button in regards to this is his Heavy Slash. It's pretty quick for a Heavy Slash, disjointed, and on block guarantees a free pierce even if you mash. If you make it whiff though, he's beyond Contesting it directly with the 6P works too if you're close and fast enough. And in case of a clash, don't worry, he's not built for speed. Outside of Heavy Slash on block, Zotto's other normals carry risk when trying to summon. Outside of his slashes or weaker, on block Pierce can be jabbed. He can deter you from contesting with Invite Hell though, creating a RPS where one wrong move could lose him the round. If you guess right and jab the Pierce, he had no longer has any. If you block the Invite Hell, which is negative 7 on block, he has to play neutral at a frame disadvantage. His other cancel options are Frog and Drill, but assuming you block either, he now has to start an offense with half of his eddy gauge at this spacing. Chances are he'll stick to Invite Hell, so as long as you respond correctly after the Invite Hell on block, his slashes will have little to no value. And just like his Heavy Slash, his Crouch Slash and Far Slash are death on it. In summation, most of Solo Zato's actions in neutral are more proactive than reactive, so if you notice Zato earning summons with normals, it's just a matter of changing your approach and baiting literally any of these options, especially in the mid range. Unfortunately, at some point, Zato will get his offense going, so let's talk about how to stop it. When Zato's got you in the Shadow Realm, there is one variable that determines most of what happens while you're in there the Eddie Gauge. If it's near full at the beginning of his offensive sequence, in all honesty, you're probably going to get hit. So if you have the ability to YRC or burst, just do it. If it's around 30%, um, you can be pretty loose about when you want to contest or if you just want to sit there and block because in a scenario where you do get hit, there's not enough Eddie gauge left for him to do too much damage. But when the gauge is around 50%, you're going to have to be a lot more proactive and analytical and look for an opening. Once you're in the Shadow Realm, remember these three rules so you can navigate your way out of there. Number one, Eddie cannot mix you. Only block high or low in relation to Zotto. Number two, Zotto cannot grab you immediately out of block zone because the game has grab protection. And number three, he cannot do a grounded overhead option without leaving a mashable gap. Once the beatdown starts, assuming you don't have an invincible reversal, Zotto's safest way of opening up is with frame traps. Small gaps in between hits that will land him counter hits if you mash and catch your pre-jump if you just hold up and back. Committing to the low block will save you from the first layer, all these frame traps, so he'll have to put some more skin in the game to open you up from there with the high-low throw mix-up. Now that you know what's coming, it's just a matter of knowing when. 
if Zotto is going to go for his high low throw mix, it has to be after the second hit of Pierce. Once you see this, that's your signal. Be prepared to continue to block, try to escape by moving out of the way, or contesting with the button. If the Zotto player doesn't like what you're choosing in this pocket of time, he'll try to mix you up by moving this pocket of time, kind of re-engaging with Pierce, and replace this current pocket with a frame trap, and move into a later point in time. But each time he does this, he uses more of the eddy gauge. That's why it's important we keep an eye on it, even though it's terrifying as a defender. Zotto is doing a delicate risk versus reward dance where he's on the timer, and each time you show him you know when the mix is coming, the more effort he has to put into altering his pressure, which requires more eddy gauge. That's why it's imperative we make sure by the time we're in the blender, he's only got about 50% of gauge to work with. Think of it as a form of damage control. And yes, I'm aware of how much work we're putting into his control and offense, but that's because when we talk about his defense, there's not much to talk about. He's literally the definition of a glass cannon. Zotto dons the title of third squishiest character in Strive, coming in hot with zero guts and a defensive rating that'd make Melia blush. If that wasn't enough, he doesn't have a DP or invincibility on any of his overdrives. All he has is a five frame jab that does convert into anything at certain ranges which means once you finally lock him down, there is no escape. And he explodes on contact all the way until the end of the round. For this reason, Zotto has to use his overdrive to make sure once it's his turn, it stays his turn. The easiest way to do this is with Sun Void, AKA the sword, after a drill has made contact. If you're gonna do anything, try to overdraw it out if there's even a tiny gap, but I wouldn't advise against it. You're just gonna have to hold what's next. Although Drill Sword is pretty safe, there are plenty of other sequences where this overdrive is not. Zotto scoots up when he does this pose, so just press anything and he dies. If you've learned nothing from this video till now, just do this and I swear you'll put the fear of God into most Zotto players. It's all about spacing here. As for his other overdrive, Amorphous, simply understand the shadow is separate from Zotto. Even if you hit him, the overdrive is still going to come out and no, you can't super jump over it. You can take advantage of its poor tracking if you have a move that can quickly pass by it under certain spacings. This does require a lot of room though, so if he's close to you, you're just gonna have to hold the plus frames. But with that, that is officially everything you need to know to stop getting ran over for free by solo players. If you made it through all this, you're probably smart enough to also know these situations don't exist in the vacuum. And that's why we're introducing quizzes to the counterplay series. Let's get started. I'll lay out three in-game situations in total. Your goal will be to figure out the best possible decision or counterplay available after I pause the gameplay. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video yourself so you have time, so you can have all the time you need to think. Afterwards, I'll give you what I think is the best possible solution under the circumstances. Once you've gone over all the situations, you'll get a ranking according to how many you think you got right. I understand most people only play one or two characters, so your cheat sheet link will be available in the top right hand corner right about now. I suggest you use it. I'll see you on the other side. Good luck. Let us start things from the very beginning. For this situation, you'll be playing May against Zotto. The round just started. What is your best possible option? Alright, so no way in the hell Zotto can compete with May's normals at round start, so he's heading to the heavens for hope. That or backdash. To cover both, I think May's best option would be the vertical heavy dolphin. On hit or on block, no matter which way it makes contact, you'll have a significant amount of frame advantage. If you thought of something else, let me know in the comments. For this situation, you'll be Nagara Yuki. It's the middle of the round and Zotto's got your wrist gauge red hot and re-engages with Sun Void while you're in the corner. What do you do? As scary as this looks, he has no business doing Sun Void that close to you. Pierce does create the same amount of block stun as Drill, but he's just too close. Even with that block stun, all you have to do is mash after you see the screen freeze from the overdrive and punish. Moving on to the next one. So with this situation, it's down to the wire, you're on soul now, and Zotto's trying to lock you down in the corner. He does a well-spaced invite hell and decides to halt your approach with a pose. What do you do? You notice you have 50% bar and he doesn't, so you lunge immediately with a gap closer special move to connect with the pose in Red RC to secure your turn. Zotto has no defensive options and quickly gets folded like a lawn chair. 
if you chose uh you know revolver vortex or even bandit bringer these are all acceptable special moves i'll even accept using forward slash or even his forward heavy command normal but these require him to be a lot closer with that being said let's go see where you land on the rankings all right, so here are the rankings for the quiz. I expect most of you guys to get at least two out of three correct. I didn't go too ham in terms of difficulty quite yet because I want you guys to get used to the whole system first. If, if this is your first time watching God here on the channel, be sure to sub because it's only gonna get better from here. As for the rest of you guys, smash that like button for your boy, spread the video around to save a soul from the salt mines. As always, I put my heart into this and wanna know what you guys think in the comments. There's more where this came from, so be sure to hit up the playlist for more. Thanks for watching and happy hunting.